Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to install the new Istio Ambient Mesh and migrate your existing Istio sidecar workloads to the new Ambient Mesh. Um, so let's take a look at what we have so far. We have our product page or uh, microservice in our front-end namespace and we have it speaking with a bunch of uh, different back-end microservices details, ratings, and reviews. And we can see that our front-end namespace has been uh, labeled with the Istio injection label. And similarly, our back-end namespace has been labeled as well. Now, uh, before we migrate, it's important to understand what's currently set up in, in your Istio environment, specifically the authorization policies and the HTTP routes, because we have to decide whether or not we would require waypoint proxies for certain workloads. Um, one of the prerequisites for using this Ambient Mesh is to utilize the Gateway API. I'm on GKE, so I've enabled it as an add-on, but otherwise you can uh, install the uh, CRDs yourself. See that, yeah. So, if you are using uh, Istio Ingress with virtual services, it's recommended to migrate to Gateway and HTTP routes before you undertake this process of migrating to Ambient Mesh. So, in it, you would want to start by migrating your virtual services into HTTP routes and switch from the Ingress to the new Gateway API. With that said, let's take a look at our existing authorization policies. We can see that we have three authorization policies. We have a product page viewer policy in our front end and a details policy and a readings policy. Mm. Let me show you quickly what the policies are doing. So uh, the details policy is essentially allowing uh, the product page service to communicate with, with it using the get HTTP method. Now it's important to note that we are using the get HTTP method here because you can see that there's L7 functionality involved, which tells us that yes, uh, for this particular auth policy, we would need a waypoint proxy to enforce it. Similarly, for our ratings policy, we can see that we are allowing uh, we are allowing uh, communication from the review service to the rating service. And again, we are mentioning the get and post HTTP methods. Again, uh, L7 stuff. So this would also require the waypoint proxy. We have one more policy, which is the gateway policy. And this is essentially allowing traffic from the gateway to the product page side. And here you can see that uh, we don't really need the waypoint proxy for this, right? We'll be happy with just the L4 stuff for this. So in our backend namespace, yes, we would require the waypoint, waypoint proxy, but not in our frontend namespace. So with that said, let's begin by uh, upgrading our Istio component. All right, we're back. So um, I've installed the Ampid mesh using Istio CTO install set profile ambient and you can see that it's installed various components it's installed the uh, zetalo uh, the uh, the uh, cnoi and let's take a look at what we have in our issue system namespace right now All right so we can see that we have a zetal pod now running on every node so i have four nodes so essentially it's running as a daemon set And this is the zero trust zone that's going to be taking care of the uh, layer for uh, layer for communication and MTLS. Note that I currently do not have a waypoint proxy installed or enabled, but we will get to that soon. So now that we have ambient mesh installed, uh, keep in mind that it's not going to impact our 
existing workloads. As far as our existing workloads are concerned, they still have the Istio sidecar proxy and they are still using them. Right? So right now we haven't made any change yet. You can see that we've got the sidecars associated with them so far. Uh, but what we want to do now is to ensure that uh, subsequent or future workloads that get deployed in my front end or my back end namespace, I don't want them to have the sidecar injected on them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to uh, remove the label, the issue injection label that I've kept on these two namespaces. So, and there's front end, issue injection, and just some minus there. Right, so there we go, it's unlabeled, and I'm going to do the same thing for the back end namespace as well. Perfect. Uh, and now I want to replace these labels with the ambient label. So I'm going to now label the front end namespace with data plane, data plane mode ambient. And I'm going to do the same thing for the back end namespace as well. And um, there we go. Now both the front end and back end are labeled with the ambient data plane mode. So any subsequent or future workloads that get deployed on either of these namespaces, it's going to go, uh, it's going to have the ambient mode enabled on it. So as we mentioned earlier, we took a look at our authorization policies and we took a look at our HTTP routes and we came to the conclusion that we are going to require uh, the waypoint proxy for the authorization policies that are in the backend namespace. If you remember, these two are using uh, HTTP GET methods as part of the policies. So we're going to require a waypoint proxy and apply it to this namespace uh, and we're going to do that right away. So it is to CTL waypoint apply. I now have the waypoint proxy. You can see it as a component. There we go. We can see that the waypoint is ready to go. If I check up the pods, you can see that I have a waypoint pod as well, and we can scale this independently uh, of the workloads themselves. So rather than having to scale with the pods or uh, as you would in the sidecar model, we can now scale these independently. Um, a key thing to note is that, you know, for the waypoint pro proxy, uh, even the HTTP routes that we were doing, so let's take a look at them again. There was a route, if you remember, um, in the backend space, the reviews route. Uh, this was to ensure that the trolley page uh, microservice communicates with the reuse v3 service. So, we have our waypoint proxy in the backend namespace that's not only going to be helping us with the authorization policies, it's also going to help us with this uh, route, bit of routing over here. Uh, now that we have our waypoint policies in place, let's go ahead and apply some new authorization policies. Now it's important to note that we do not want to modify or override any of our existing policies. Uh, that's going to cause issues given that they currently still have their sidecars injected. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some new authorization policies uh, and then we are they, they are going to be automatically enforced once uh, the uh, once the deployments have been restarted and ev every pod has been uh, migrated to, to the ambient mesh. That's when they're going to start utilizing this new authorization policy, which the waypoint will take care of. So in terms of difference, right, we pretty much have the very similar authorization policy as we did before. We have our details policy and we have our ratings policy. Uh, as I mentioned, we don't need to change anything with the gateway policy since uh, that's just dealing with L4 stuff. But for um, the authorization policies that require some level of L7 filtering, right, like we can see here, uh, a key, the a key point to note is that we cannot use selectors that like we were using before. So, if you look at our standard sidecar auth policy, here we are actually using uh, selectors to identify which workloads this policy would apply to. Uh, this will not work for the waypoint proxy. Instead, what we are going to have to use are target references or target refs. So that's the primary difference in the ambient policies is that we are now using 
target drafts to mention where we want these uh, policies to apply to. But in terms of functionality, it's effectively the same policy. It's just been formatted to fit the ambient mesh waypoint proxy requirement. Uh, and there we go. Now we have the, the authorization policies in place that are going to be taken care of by our waypoint proxy. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and apply a rollout restart to all of the workloads. Uh, this way we can start slowly, mi we can start migrating uh, them to the ambient mesh. So let's start with the, uh, the front end workloads. And then you can notice, like, even as we see that these older sidecar po pods are being terminated, we have two new pods that are deployed on the ambient mesh. You can see they're one out of one, so there's no sidecar attached to them. They are instead using the Z tunnel and the waypoint proxies as required. Let's roll out the same change to the workloads in the backend namespace. Brilliant. Now that's done as well. Let's take a look and see what's happening there. Yes, we can see that the changes are being made and that they're switching to single container workloads. Uh, we've created a sleep pod in both the, uh, both the namespaces. So we're gonna just go ahead and delete them. Oh, okay, no, no problem, sorry to meet you, okay. So uh, I'm going to create two more dummy pods, uh, one in the front-end namespace, one in the back-end namespace. And the purpose of this is just to kind of verify our authorization policies. Uh, aside from that, they're not really doing much, but yeah, we're going to use these pods to kind of test out whether the, whether, whether the authorization policies are being enforced or not. Hopefully the restart should have been rolled out across the entire environment. We can use Istio CTL ZC workload, just to see which all workloads are part of the ambient mesh. And there we go. Similarly, we can do this with service. Brilliant, we can see like these ones have the waypoint. So the key difference is that the workloads on the mesh are using Istio's HTTP-based overlay network environment. Uh, and that's reflected here in the protocol over here. We can also check out the certs that are used for MTLS by the Z-Tunnel. And you can see that Istio has created strong identities for these various services and assign those certificates as well. Perfect. Now all that's left to do is to just test out the policies and see if they are still working as expected. So we created a policy that essentially uh, allows the product page viewer, uh, the product page viewer, uh, let's look at, the, look at this again, the gateway policy, right? So this policy allows the product page service to be accessed by the ingress, but by nothing else. Remember that we did not make any change to this policy uh, since no L7 filtering was required. It remained as it is. So this should still work. We are just using, uh, we are communicating with it with the sleep command. And yeah, there we can see that it's not allowed as expected. So the sleep pod is not able to access the product page pod, which is the behavior that we want. Similarly, uh, let's test out the details policy. So this is the one that we've upgraded to use the uh, target reference. Our details policy would allow traffic from the uh, product page uh, service using get, HTTP get, but nothing else. So we are going to test out this communication by using the same sleep pod in the front end namespace. 
And there we go. We have a 403 reflecting that we've been denied permission, which is uh, the behavior that we want. And lastly, let's check out the last authorization policy, which was the ratings policy. Uh, and this one here allows traffic from uh, the rating service to the review service. Uh, and if we are using get and post, and if we commun sorry, if, if we try to communicate it with, uh, with it using the sleep pod once again, this time in the back in the space, we should be we should receive a permission denied or a 403. And yes, that's what we have. So now we've confirmed that these two authorization policies are working as expected uh, and that the uh, ambient mesh rollout has been completed successfully for both the front end and back end namespaces. Right, so everything is now in order. The only thing that's left to do is to actually go ahead and delete the uh, authorization policies that were the legacy authorization policies that are part of the standard mesh. Oh, not this one. Yeah, these two. So the details policy and the ratings policy, we're going to go ahead and delete those two. And the ratings policy as well. Perfect. And that would conclude the migration process. All of your workloads are now migrated successfully to the Istio Ambient Mesh with zero disruption. And it was a pretty straightforward, simple process. The key thing to keep, keep in mind is to go through your existing workloads identify those workloads that would require waypoint proxies, identify those workloads which are using uh, legacy authorization policies with selectors instead of target references. Those would have to be upgraded if they're using ELSA and filtering stuff. And yes, of course, uh, it does require you to use the evolved version of the Ingress, which is the gateway API. But there we go. Uh, that is how to migrate to Istio Ambient Mesh from Istio Sidecar. And thank you for... Uh, joining me on this demo. I hope you learned something.